This is PsychBoost, helping you with your psychology qualification one video at a time. This video is on perception, and in this fifth GCSE video, we'll be covering theories of perception. The really kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. A very big thank you for your help, guys. To join them, follow the link. For everyone, you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. Now, I imagine you're here to study GCSE psychology. So here are the terms on the AQA GCSE specification we're going to cover in this video. As we go through it, they're going to be in red text and you need to be able to respond to questions on all of this. There are two competing theories on how our mind makes sense of sensory information. Let's start with Gregory's constructivist theory of perception. We call this a top-down theory of perception. So this suggests our cognitive processes actively construct our perception using sensory information, but combining it with stored knowledge, schemas, and expectations into what we ultimately experience. Now this theory suggests we have to construct perception because the sensory information we have about the world is just incomplete. Our brains have to make guesses, or we can say inferences, about factors like distance and motion. And our brains make those guesses from visual cues, so linear perspective and height in a plane. Inside our mind, we create what is called a model of reality. This is what we perceive and is influenced by a range of factors. This model of reality is different to what's really out there in the world. Gregory's theory takes a nurture approach to explaining perception. We make our inferences based on the experiences we've had with the world. So the same sensory information can be interpreted by two different people very differently, say if they've had different cultural experiences. Gregory used visual illusions like the Muller liar to demonstrate his ideas. They're good examples of how your brain has to make assumptions based on limited information. Let's evaluate Gregory's ideas. We'll look in the next video about how perception is altered by expectation, culture, and emotion. All of these factors support Gregory's idea that perception is actively constructed. But there is an alternate theory of perception that suggests the eyes are actually able to detect the world accurately without the need really for inferences. Another advantage of Gregory's theory is it does provide an explanation for visual illusions. People make incorrect inferences from limited sensory information, but these visual illusions are unusual manipulated 2D images. They may not really apply to how we perceive the world in normal life. So the alternate theory of perception is Gibson's direct theory. This is described as a bottom-up theory. We passively and accurately perceive the world directly just using the information from our senses. Gibson thought that accurate direct perception has evolved in animals to help them navigate the environment. Those animals best adapted to accurately perceive the world survive. Now Gibson thought that inferences weren't needed to make sense of visual information. The use of an object, something he termed its affordances, are directly perceivable. So an apple is something you can directly perceive as food, but also something that can be thrown. We don't need to rely on past experiences and inferences with apples to use them. The visual information we gain from our eyes is complex. So we have shades of light and color, texture and details. And they're all perceived directly. This information allows an accurate and direct perception of the world, including the features of objects like distance. So we can see that Gibson's theory focuses on nature and its role in perception suggesting that we have everything we need for accurate perception from birth. So, accurate perception is innate. He argued that from an evolutionary perspective, that animals would evolve to have the most accurate perception to help them survive. And one monocular depth cue that gives them point to from the environment is motion parallax. So you've likely noticed this when you're in a car or a train. Things closest to us appear to move faster than things in the distance. Gibson used this example of motion parallax as an example of how much information our eyes can give us directly about features such as motion and depth. So let's look at evaluations of Gibson. The speed of perception, being able to respond quickly and precisely to visual stimuli, is better explained by Gibson's direct theory, as Gregory's theory requires an additional level of mental processing. Gibson's theory suggests that we gain all of the information we need from our eyes, 
but this struggles to explain how we're fooled by visual illusions. But Gibson is correct in saying there's a significant amount of information directly perceived by the eyes. This could allow accurate perception. Now, one of the terms that Gibson used was affordances. This was used to explain how we automatically perceive the usefulness of objects from sensory information. Gibson used affordances to avoid the concept of inferences influence and perception. But researchers reject the idea of affordances. As many of the things we use in everyday life, we've learned how to use and we've stored that knowledge. So, now that we covered that content, you need to be able to use all the information to actually answer questions. Here are five questions I've made to test your skills. So, pause the video and give them a go. For those of you who support me on Patreon, I've put together an additional bonus video showing you how to answer these questions properly. For everybody else, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video on perception, factors affecting perception.